Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, July 26th. So we have the moon in Aries all day, but we are going to see that moon go void, of course, at 6.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're not locking into Taurus energy until 1.23 p.m. on the 27th. So that is a huge window of, I'm going to say, uncertainty, of indecision of instability that of course is not going to work in our favor we do not like feeling up in the air about a lot of things but that's kind of been the name of the game as of late if you haven't really noticed take a good look around we're divided on our choices on our decisions on the path on the direction that we actually want to go in now granted the moon in Aries energy has us kind of aggressively pursuing a new path, has us jumping into new chapters, willy-nilly, if you will. Um, but we just had Mercury move into his rulership in Virgo energy. He's slowing down. He is in his rulership. We are kind of, you know, focusing in on the details a little bit more. We're getting down to the nitty gritty, but he's slowing down because he's going to go retrograde here very shortly. Speaking of retrogrades, Chiron, the wounded healer, is going retrograde here today. If you haven't listened to the Astro Forecast for this event, if you haven't downloaded your Leo Season e-guide, I'm going to recommend you do so and really capture what is going on for you. Why do you feel torn? What are you torn in between? Where do you need to take a good look at the wounds, at the pain, at the trauma that may be fueling the wrong kind of path, the wrong kind of decision? Chiron going retrograde is definitely going to have us taking a good look at our pain and trauma wounds, where we need to do better, where we need to feel better, especially when it comes to our mental health and our overall physical wellness. So there's definitely going to be, I'm going to say, an amplified energy of indecision. There's going to be an intensity to take a good look at our blockages, at our challenges, at our obstacles. We don't want to get down about it. We just want to reframe our options, our opportunities at this particular present moment. So with all of that being said, there are 12 different aspects popping off here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. The very first thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Aries energy coming up to, teaming up with, bumping into that north node in Aries energy, which means that the moon is technically sitting across from directly opposing the south node in that Libra energy. So let's talk about that for just a second. First of all, a conjunction is when the moon and the north node, they're coming to a reset, if you will. There's an ending and there's a beginning. The thing that is ending, I would say, is our pivoting, looking back. Again, we just kind of came out of cancer season. That was all about looking back. We're just kind of scratching the surface of this Leo energy. We won't pivot fully forward until that new moon in Leo. And so the moon in Aries right now, yes, we are aggressively wanting to take action and make moves to kind of, you know, make some progress in the path, in the direction that we currently think we should be walking, which of course is going to require a little bit of growth, a little bit of evolution within ourselves, especially emotionally speaking. But what is ending is this inability to see the forest past the trees. Now, granted, it's going to be a little bit drawn out. We are going to need a little bit of time to kind of see where it is that we're closing our ourselves off to looking back to opening up those old wounds picking the scab so to speak and we are going to begin to start kind of focusing a little bit more on where it is that we want to go from here now let's talk about the moon's opposition to that south node in Libra and energy the south node is where we're coming from what we have to close the door on what we have to move away from and in that Libra and energy this is about the codependency in our relationship dynamics this is about breaking away from being so intertwined so kind of connected to other people that we stop doing the things that we need to be doing for our own damn self this is the Aries energy forcing us into a new path to be more independent, to go on a solo quest, to know thyself versus stepping away from what has been tried, tested, true and comfortable. What has been us leaning on other people, us kind of giving other people more power over our thoughts, our ideas, our opinions, the path, the direction that we need to be walking alone at this present moment. So the natural disposition is to want to fall back 
into those relationship dynamics, which of course we've grown too much. We fought too hard to get away from particular relationship exchanges. We cannot go back. If anything, there's going to be a restlessness. There's going to be an anxiousness and anticipation, if you will, to break free of those old chapters so that we can get started on doing our own thing. The sun in Leo energy going to make a very awkward interaction with Saturn. So Saturn being the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations. We're retrograde in this Pisces energy with Mr. Saturn. We're trying to wrap up old karmic cycles. We're trying to collapse the old structures of our physical realms, of our belief system, of our dreams, of our visions. We, in this particular situation, the sun shining a bright light in this Leo energy, we're being kind of drawn to focus on what we need to do, what we need to pursue, what our heart, our soul, our spirit is calling us to actually do. The Saturn energy going to bring a little bit of a reality check, never really feels that good. But basically what Saturn is doing is illuminating to us where there's blockages, where there's limitations, where there's restrictions really putting us in a situation to see how strongly we actually feel about this new path, this new option, this new opportunity for us to do something different, for us to move forward, for us to be heart led. Now, not necessarily is it a bad aspect, but sometimes it doesn't feel good to be illuminated to all the blockages, all the challenges, all the limitations, all the restrictions that we're currently facing in trying to decide how it is that we're pivoting away from some of the karmic chapters that are no longer alive and well, and how we're going to pivot to this new path, this new direction. The moon in Aries energy, then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. So basically, this is an illumination on where it is that we're hella confused, where it is that we're craving clarity, where it is that we're kind of getting, I'm going to say tunnel vision on where the problems are in existence. Sometimes when you focus on the problems, of course, we want to focus on the problems in order to fix them. That is very Mercury and Virgo energy, if I do say so myself. However, sometimes in identifying all the problematic areas, we start to realize that there's more problems than there are solutions, and that never feels good. And so emotionally speaking, we're looking for clarity. We're waiting for that aha moment. We're waiting for a download of inspiration and excitement on what we want to do, what we need to do, what we desire to do, especially when it comes to breaking free from some of the physical constructs, meaning breaking free from old routines, old relationship dynamics, old careers, old ways of making money, old ways of just going about our day-to-day -day life. We have to do something different in order to create a different result. We just don't know what that different is at this present moment. 7.18 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Chiron is going retrograde. So of course, again, I'm going to encourage you to take a listen to July's energy forecast, that overview. I'm going to take you to that astro forecast that we do a deep dive in what Chiron's retrograde is all about. And of course, encourage you to download the Leo season e-guide, flip to this particular energy shift and capture what is going on with you. This energy is going to intensify from now until the end of this year. Chiron will not go direct basically until the 29th of December, which puts us in a very intense melting pot of having to get our shit together, having to heal the existing exposed wounds, having to wrap things up and put ourselves on a different path to actually help ourselves get out of the funk, get out of the past, get out of that old karma. The moon in Aries energy, then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde in Aquarius energy. We love this because it is a mood and attitude shift. It is an empowering shift at that. We are intensifying our focus on where it is that, yep, there are some challenges. There are some blockages. There are some restrictions that we're currently facing, but we're not going to let them get us down. This is our ability to see 
word challenge is actually an opportunity to walk the walk, talk the talk, and actually prove that we've grown, that we've healed, that we're able to look at challenges and obstacles straight on and actually do something about it. This isn't about kind of succumbing to defeat as much as it is rising to a new challenge. The moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Gemini energy. Another reason why we're divided on the options, on the choices, on the decisions that we currently have in front of us. Jupiter is bringing the optimism. He's bringing the confidence. He is like the hype girl, if you will, of the Zodiac when he's being aspected in a positive way such as this. The fire energy from Aries, the air energy from Gemini, giving us a spark, giving us an aha moment, giving us a little bit of clarity on one of these choice points, decision points, paths and directions that now seem a little bit more favorable over the other. I'm going to encourage you to not act on impulse. We are making no decisions, no commitments that are actually going to stick. The minute that you have an aha moment, the minute that you have clarity, the minute that you have an emotion that kind of suggests that you are making a decision, congratulations, sit in that for as long as it lasts, but it is not going to stick. It will not stick. I can almost bet money that it will not stick. May I remind you, Mercury is about to go retrograde. Okay, so we're going to have to revisit those particular, let's call them choice points, that decision that I'm going to say you're confidently making at this particular juncture that you're going to be second guessing over the next coming of days. Okay, so the moon in Aries then goes ahead and makes an awkward interaction with Mercury. Now in his rulership, now in this Virgo energy, if you haven't listened to that astro forecast or captured what's going on in your headspace where topics and themes and choices are concerned, download that Leo season e-guide. It is there for your help, for your assistance, for your guidance, for your resource. You're going to want to capture what's going on right now. You're going to need to come back to this multiple times as we move through August, as we move through September, as we find ourselves in eclipse season again early in the fall just a recommendation. Okay, so the moon being our heart space, Mercury being our head space, they're trying to get on the same page. They're in the same book. They're in the same chapter. They're just a couple of pages away. The moon in this Aries energy, again, is fired up, wants to take action, wants to make moves, wants to start something new, wants to initiate a brand new chapter. Mercury now in Virgo energy is like, whoa, 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 hold up. We don't have a plan. We're not doing anything without a plan. Even more than that, we need to take stock of where it is that we're at, okay? We need to focus on cleaning up the loose ends of the past. We need to focus on, you know, really bringing a full completion, a full closure to our lives at this present time before we start building something new. So again, our heart space, ready to move on, ready to move forward. Mercury's like, nah, -uh, we're not going back. We're not moving forward. We're standing right here. We're taking a lay of the land. We need to get a very good idea of the blockages, of the challenges, of the limitations and restrictions that we're currently facing. We have to get a good idea of what needs to end, what we have to bring to a completion point, a finality point, before we can start building towards something new. The moon, then going to trine, beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Leo energy. A trine means that we're working with like elements. This happens to be fire. We love fire. Fire is going to help evaporate some of the heavier emotions, some of the confusion. We are also reigniting a fire, a spark, a flame within us. Because Venus is involved, this has to do with what and who makes us happy. Where relationship dynamics are concerned, safety and security is concerned, where our money matters are concerned, we're being called to do something new. We're being called to create something new, to pursue something new. We may not have all the details there, but this particular energy is going to intensify those particular aha moments. Again, side note. Just when you think that you know, just when you think you've made a decision, just when you think you've made a choice, please congratulate yourself. You've come very far, but also be prepared to second guess. Okay, 
So this is the point in time, 6.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon is going to go void. Of course, things get shaky, things get uncertain, things get unstable. And in Aries energy, we're likely going to have a little bit of anger, a little bit of frustration and agitation thrown in there as well. The moon, while void, is going to make a positive interaction with Saturn. Saturn, of course, is illuminating for us earlier on in the day where we have obstacles, where we have challenges, where we have limitations, where we have restrictions. This particular interaction is almost like we're tapping into a little bit of an aggression within us with this mood, moon in, a, in Aries, and we are rising to the challenge. We aren't looking at those blockages, those limitations, those restrictions as something that is going to prevent us from moving in such a way. Instead, it's almost asking to see what we got, to see how we're going to get through it. We are not turning away from this particular opportunity to overcome some of these blockages, challenges, boundaries, and restrictions. So this is a building energy. We like this. We understand that we are inspired and motivated, even if we are allowing anger and agitation and frustration to act as the fuel to get our ass in gear. We don't mind. There's some kind of movement. We've been waiting for some kind of movement, and we are definitely going to double down on the challenges that we're currently facing. The moon is then going to semi-square Mars. Mars rules over the Aries energy that the moon is in. Mars, being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, is in Gemini energy. Again, another divisive energy. Mars is trying to decide where the energy, where the passion, where the intensity, where the excitement, where the inspiration, where the motivation needs to be. What path are we choosing? What option are we choosing? What direction are we going in? The Gemini energy still has us weighing the pros and cons. We're a little bit scatterbrained on what option, what path, what decision is actually for us. The moon creating tension and conflict with Mars. This is where the agitation, the anger, the frustration is coming out to play. Does it feel good? Absolutely not. Is it supposed to? 100% no, but what it does do is it illuminates us to how much we care. You don't get angry over something that you don't care about. You don't get frustrated over something that you have no attachment to. So if you're realizing where it is that you're just tired of this stagnancy, where you're angered and frustrated because you wanna see some kind of movement, that should illuminate to you where it is that you're done with certain chapters, certain people, places, and things, and where it is that you're actually connected, actually craving, a change in path, in direction, in reality. So again, we have every opportunity to use the not so nice thoughts and feelings as clarity on what it is that we actually care about, what we actually have feelings towards. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the heart and soul of the Zodiac here in the Leo energy is going to make a very tough interaction with Saturn, who is retrograde in this Pisces energy. So this is definitely not going to feel good. It's not supposed to. Um, but it's bringing a lot of attention to where it is that we're frustrated frustrated in our relationship dynamics, frustrated, not knowing where to go from here, what we want to build, what we want to create, what we want to pursue, just agitated as F in our heart space, just trying to be patient when many of us weren't born with patience. We have a lot of wants, needs, and desires that aren't being fulfilled. We have a lot of, let's call them plans that we want to take action upon, but we don't know where to start. The lingering energy and emotions from topics and themes, especially relationship dynamics that have come to an end in this karmic chapter, still need acceptance. They still need a certain finality. And until that happens, we can't move on. We can't build towards something new. We can't pivot in the way that we wish that we could at this present moment. So definitely a little bit of a harsh reality check. Negative Nancy coming out to play. We're questioning our wants, needs, and desires at this moment. We're banging our head against a wall because we just can't seem to close the freaking door on this karmic chapter that we need to move away from. The last thing that we have going on here today is Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in his rulership, 
in this Virgo energy. Again, we have to focus on the problems in order to fix them. The Virgo energy is the fixer, the healer, the problem solver of the Zodiac. But of course, you have to be aware of the issues that you need to fix, heal, and resolve in order to actually do anything about it. Mercury is making a tough interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So this isn't going to feel good either, but it's intensifying where it is that we need to have tunnel vision on the issue on the problem. The Aquarius energy that Pluto is in needs us to improve, needs us to do things better, needs us to free ourselves from some of the things that we do not have control over. The mercurial energy is kind of pushing that mental plane, pushing that intellect, figure it out. What's the problem? Think outside of the box. How can we solve it? Pluto, on the other hand, doing the deep dive in the psyche where some of these seeds got planted, where we have to flip the script, where we have to break free of the conditioning of the programming of the old version of self, which again is the problem at this particular point, in order for us to pivot and actually move on, actually start building towards something new. But again, we're just torn. We're doing this teeter-totter, this tug of war, this back and forth between knowing what we want to do versus second guessing what we thought we wanted to do. And so again, we're in this awkward situation pretty much up until the new moon in Leo energy where we're going to do this back and forth, where we're going to want to move on, want to launch and catapult ourselves far into the future. However, the past still has some sort of hold on us. We have loose ends to tie up. We have chapters that need to end. We need to bring things to a finality.